I'm Margaret with Fishmonger Approved, and today we're going to get ready to smook us some Wahoo. Wahoo's been in the freezer. I've put the Wahoo in the freezer and I put Wahoo and all other white fish uh, in the freezer before I smoke it. Let it thaw out obviously for uh, 24 to 48 hours in the refrigerator. Um, the reason you want to do that is for whatever reason the molecules in the fish that get a little bit denser when it's frozen and then when you thaw it out it's at a, at a better consistency and it works better in the smoker. Uh, Wahoo, any other kind of white fish that's got a, um, a uh, let's say for a grouper for example, it's got a high moisture content, you're going to go ahead and, and cook it in your smoker on a, uh, a more of a, uh, a heat smoke rather than a, a low smoke. Uh, salmon you do entirely different. Uh, salmon is um, a fish that you'd start off at a lower temperature and bring up to uh, gradually to a higher temperature at about 275. Uh, the reason you do that is because this fish, I'm not particularly interested in, in the appearance in it when it's, when it's finished. Um, I'm not brining it, I'm not adding any seasoning to it before I smoke it. That all comes at the end because I, obviously this fish we're going to make into our white fish uh, uh, fish spread when it's all complete. So again we're going to go ahead and stick this in the refrigerator for 24 to 48 hours until it's completely thawed out before we put it on the smoker. Today we're going to go ahead and smoke up some white fish. So we're going to start with the method of starting the charcoal, regardless of the type of grill you have, if you're smoking outside, you've got to start with something. So I prefer just to use you know, the run-of-the-mill charcoal briquettes. Now I've gotten, I picked up these at Home Depot, so I think it was reasonably priced, at like eight dollars for a, a, a large bag of uh, 20 pounds. <clears throat> Always use a fire starter. Do not use the type of charcoal that's got the lighter fluid in the bag. So put the charcoal in the fire starter, and then I'll just take some of the paper off the bag. Use that as my uh, source for the flame. Remember safety, I gotta mention this. Whenever you're starting a fire, look around you, make sure nothing's gonna catch on fire. You know, a random branch on a tree next to where it's gonna accidentally ignite. So you put your uh, paper underneath the uh, chimney starter and hope the lighter works. There you go. The chimney starter's got its flame underneath started. Got a little smoke coming out the top. That's what you want. See it continue to smoke up. Once the flames start coming out of the top, it's ready to go and we'll pour it over the wood. Okay, so we're back at the grill. As you see, the flames are popping out the top. And I realize everyone doesn't have a huge smoker grill like this, so what we're going to do after I get the fire started in my uh, firebox, we're going to take a run up to Home Depot and check out what kind of smokers they have. And so maybe we can get a better understanding of something that the average homeowner might be able to pick up and, and utilize for this. So while the fire is hot, regardless of the grill, what you want to do is go ahead and pour it out into your firebox. What I'm using for a, uh, a wood source here is a, a Florida oak. Um, when we go to Home Depot, I'll show you the different types of wood that they have that you'd be able to use and explain the process and how to, you know, you're going to have to soak it in water and whatever. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and head to Home Depot and we'll be right back. <laughs> So now we're in the store, charcoal, 
I don't have anything on sale today, but I bet you anything over the next the Labor Day weekend, they'll have a sale on charcoal, and that's when you want to stock up on it. Either way, that's what you want to look for is lump charcoal. So here's your chimney fire starter. You definitely want to pick up one of those. Don't forget to get an electric lighter too, one of those propane lighter sticks. If you get one of those barrel smokers, you're going to definitely want to get a bag of chips. You can use this, I think, is apple. This is apple. Ap Apple's great. Perfect. So you're going to soak your wood in water for at least an hour, maybe two hours before you start using it. What you want to make sure you do is have the wood submerged in the water, so put something heavy on top of it so that it sits in the water covered for at least two hours, I'd say. We also have the chips, which burn up fairly quickly. Either way, you'd have to soak these in some water as well before you go ahead and start using those. This smoker would be my smoker of choice. You could probably find them cheaper, different off-brands, depending on where you shop. What I like about this is you've got your firebox down here. <coughs> got everything tied together, so I really can't take it apart and demonstrate it, but your firebox is down there. You'd put your charcoal in here, your hot coals, your soft wood chips go on top of that. And what's nice about this is that you can open this and start feeding in your wood as it starts to, to burn out. When you see the smoke starting to go away, just continue to feed it wood every hour or so. There's a wide variety of other utensils that you probably want to pick up while you're at the store. I wouldn't bother with any of this stuff. This grill cleaner, it's a little overrated, but what you do want to get is a, a good grill brush. Get your fire hot uh, before you use the grill and then just scrub it off the grates with one of these brushes. One other thing I need to add too, uh, before you use your grill, if it's brand new, you do not want to go ahead and start cooking meat on it. What you want to do is get your fire good and hot in the grill, let it burn out, and then go ahead and start it again for your cooking. Place the fish on the grate inside the smoker. Notice there's a little bit of room in between each slice. You want to leave a little bit of room in between each slice so that the air can move around it while it's smoking. It's been three hours. I've had a chance to freshen up, put a clean shirt on before company comes over. So the fish is ready. Let's take a look. You notice that it's shrunk up quite a bit too because again Wahoo has got quite a bit of water content in it when it's fresh, freshly frozen. So the fish is done. One thing that's pretty important though, that you cannot make your spread right away. You have to put this in the refrigerator and let it cool overnight. A couple reasons for that. Uh, number one, it's easier to pick off of the skin. A lot of these pieces have uh, skin on them. Uh, the other real important reason is you don't want to mix it in with mayonnaise and cream cheese and uh, change the uh, temperature of the, of the, uh, the cream cheese and the uh, mayo mix. So we're off into the kitchen and we're going to let it cool, sit in the refrigerator overnight, and then tomorrow we'll go ahead and make our smoked white fish spread. So we're getting ready to make Maximus Seafood Shack fish spread. The Wahoo has been sitting in the refrigerator overnight and look how beautiful it is. Like I said, you want to let it sit and cool in the refrigerator, so 24 hours is perfect. And um, this has got the skin on, so I'm just going to go ahead and peel it off of the skin, just like that. And all of this fish, what I'm going to do is start breaking it up and just putting it in the bowl. I'm, I'm feeling for any bones, and that's a really important thing because you definitely, even that bloodline's okay, but you don't want to have any, any stray bones in the, uh, in the spread. So just go ahead and start breaking it into little pieces, feeling for any stray bones. Pull it off the skin. 
Now the Wahoo is, um, it's, a, it's got a higher moisture content prior to, to smoking. Um, this fish came out, you know, it's, it, when you feel it, you'll feel it, I'm, I'm talking about, but it's got a little bit of moisture still in it. It's almost like um, if you were to eat it uh, at a restaurant, cooked extra well, well done. So that's kind of the consistency it's at right now. A little bit of a crust on the top of it. And then I'm gonna weigh it, just to be certain that I'm at around four, four pounds because that's what the, men, the, uh, the recipe calls for. So I'm pulling it off the skin and breaking it into small pieces. The food processor is gonna do the rest of the work. Again, I'm feeling for bones. Feeling for bones. And like I said, here's a bone, randomly. And I filleted it, when I filleted it, I looked for every bone I could find, but you wanna make sure when you pick it apart, you find all those bones that might accidentally be in there, especially because I'm also using pieces around the neck and other things you know that may or may not necessarily be in a fillet of choice. So the, the consistency of the fish is really in, in the long run also going to dictate the amount of uh, moisture you want to add in, in terms of uh, mayonnaise or cream cheese. I tend to add more cream cheese to my spread than I do mayonnaise. So if you have a drier smoked fish, you'll add, obviously you'll add a little bit more um, mayonnaise. Um, but at the end, we'll, we'll go through that process and I'll show you what that means when we're mixing the final product together. So let's weigh our fish. With the weight of the bowl, we're a little bit over four pounds, but that equates to four pounds of fish. So we've got our <clears throat> vegetable mix with the celery, onion, carrot ready to go. And our Cuisinart processor. Go ahead and add that to the processor. What I want to do is um, I want to go ahead and start on, um, just turn it on and off. And then start pulsing. I don't want to make it into a paste, but I want to get it chopped up. And it, you know, just a fine consistency. You want to have a little, you know, pieces of the uh, vegetable in there without, again, making it into a paste. So check it after about, you know, a couple seconds. Then go ahead and pulse it again. What I just did is I took the lid off, stirred it up, got it back down towards the blade. Just continue to pulse. Check it again. It's not quite there yet. Because there's not a whole lot of liquid in here, you want to keep pushing the vegetables back down towards the blade. We're almost there. Let's say one or more, one or two more pulses, and we are there. about right. I'm also looking for is, you know, sometimes celery will have like long strands and, and you definitely don't want to have that in your spread. So this looks like everything is, is pretty much evenly consistently pulsed. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off the processor and add it to my very large mixing bowl. I like a larger bowl, larger than what you might think, because as you start mixing things together, you want it to stay in the bowl and not get all over the counter. So you get all your vegetables out of the processor. If you leave a little bit in there, that's okay, because we're not done. So put the processor back on. And now we're gonna go ahead and add our fish pieces. And <clears throat> this is a lot of fish, so you might have to do it in a couple of batches. In this case, I'm, I'm certainly going to have to do that. 
So I'll go ahead and add half of the uh, four pounds of smoked fish to the processor and let's go ahead and get that going. This, in this case, you want to go ahead and turn it on. That was probably 30 seconds. Let's take a look at it. Okay. Given the texture of the fish after it's smoked, um, the moisture content, you really want to have a fish product that looks kind of like this. You know, you've got little pieces of fish in there. You, when you feel it, there's not a lot of hard pieces there. Something that's, you, you still want to have fish. You want to know you're eating fish. You don't want to into a mealy mess. So I'm going to say that one's okay. That's good to go. Just going to add that. Go ahead and do the rest now. Sometimes, say this is a hard end. When I'm done with this second batch, what I'm gonna do is gonna feel through the uh, the mix and see if I've got extra pieces that are, you know, kind of brittle. Looks more like a beef jerky, fish jerky. And, and if that's the case, I'm gonna pull those little pieces out. Again, just go ahead and turn it on. Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. You don't want that in your spread. Let's let that go for another little bit. Okay, that one. Looks like everything's pretty much chopped up. I look for all those hard pieces as I'm going through here. You know, a couple are okay because once you add your cream cheese and your mayonnaise, a lot of times there's one I'm gonna pull that out. Maybe I'm over picky, but that's the way it is. So, okay. So now we're gonna add the cream cheese. 16 ounces of cream cheese. And eight ounces of Duke's mayonnaise. And believe me, this is what you want to use. I've got the juice of two key limes, which is, I would say about an eighth of a cup of juice. Worcestershire sauce. Quarter cup of spice mix. And your hot sauce, which is my own personal recipe, one teaspoon. And let's go ahead and let this go. All right, I've been mixing this for probably about a minute to two minutes to a nice paste. Now I'm gonna put this in. Like I said earlier, if, um, you know, I, I go a little bit light, I would say, on the, uh, the mayonnaise cream cheese mixture. I think this is going to be a perfect blend, though, given the, given the consistency of the, uh, the texture of the fish, the moisture content. Okay. You have to add more, it's better to add. You can't always take it away, never. So here's my big spoon, and we're going to just start pulling it together. So it looks like we got everything pretty much mixed together. It takes a little bit of time, but it's well worth it. And I have to mention, you know, people always ask me, why don't you just put everything together in the blender? Well, you can't do it that way. You have to do things separately, and then you pull it together at the end. It's just the way it has to be done. Believe me. Let's try it. That's a good thing. All right, so now, just like we used to do with the shark, we're gonna measure it out in our half pound containers. 
And I used to give them a little bit more. Eight ounces. So to make it official, Maximo C. Thick Shack Whitefish Thread. 